Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll be overclocking the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X 16 core processor to 4.65 GHz using custom loop water cooling. The 5950X is the top dog in AMD's new Zen 3 processor lineup. The Vermeer microarchitecture is similar to the previous generations and is also powered by a 7 nanometer process node. The main benefits can be found in the significantly increased performance per clock and increased frequencies at the similar power level. The CPU is still chiplet based and features the same I.O. die as the previous generations. The Ryzen 9 5950X offers 16 cores and 32 threads with a listed base frequency of 3.4 GHz and a boost frequency of 4.9 GHz. It is rated at 105 watts TDP and should retail at an MSRP of 799 US dollar. In this video, we'll be covering the basic steps needed to get your CPU all the way to 4.65 GHz. We'll cover four overclocking scenarios. First, we'll simply enable Precision Boost Overdrive. Second, we'll push the CPU to our maximum Prime95 with AVX stable overclocking settings. Third, we'll push the CPU further to our maximum all core stable frequency. Lastly, we'll look at what I think is the most interesting feature about the Crosshair 8 Dark Hero. We'll do some DOS overclocking. But before that, let's have a look at the platform constraints and the specific hardware we're using for this guide. Along with the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X processor, in this guide we will be using the Asus ROG Crosshair 8 Dark Hero motherboard, an ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti, a pair of G-Skill Triton Z Royal DDR4-3200 memory sticks, and of course EK water cooling. All this is mounted on top of our favorite open bench table. The cost of the components should be around $3,500. That's $800 for the CPU, $600 for the cooling, $430 for the motherboard, $200 for the bench table, $160 for the memory, and $1,300 for the graphics cards. Before we start with the overclocking, let's cover some of the constraints we will face. A Ryzen 5000 CPU consists of a couple of parts. Each CPU has multiple chiplets. A chiplet is a die with specific functions such as CPU cores, I.O. hub, memory controller, and so on. All the chiplets communicate with each other via the fabric interconnect. A core chiplet die, or CCD, is one of the chips on the AMD CPU. While a CCD used to consist of two CCXs paired together, on Zen 3, a CCD consists of a single CCX. CCX is short for Core Complex. The Core Complex consists of eight individual cores, each with their L1 and L2 cache. They also share a large 32 megabyte L3 cache. The Ryzen 9 5950X has two CCDs with one CCX and the CCX has all eight cores enabled. By default, the fabric, memory controller, and memory frequency operate in synchronous mode. That means typically the CPU will run all frequencies in one-to-one -one ratio. In asynchronous mode, the memory controller will operate at half the frequency of the system memory. The fabric clock will also run below system memory frequency. So you will have a performance penalty. The penalty can be overcome by increasing the memory frequency to well over DDR4 4000 speeds. With all this in mind, let's jump into the benchmarks and overclocking. Here's a list of the benchmarks used in this guide. SuperPi 4M, Geekbench 5, HWBot X265, Cinebench R20, ROG RealBench version 2.56, and Final Fantasy 14. Before we get started with pushing the performance of the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X processor, let's first take a look at the scoring at stock settings. Super Pi 4M, 35.105 seconds. Geekbench 5 Single, 1,566 points. Geekbench 5 Multi, 13,161 points. HWBot X265 4K, 26.815 frames per second. Cinebench R20, 9,658 marks. ROG RealBench, 246,089 points. Final Fantasy 14, 173.22 frames per second. As said, as a first step, we will enable Precision Boost Overdrive to benefit from AMD's most aggressive performance configuration. 
Precision Boost Override aims to maximize performance in case your system is equipped with extra cooling capacity and adequate system components. The performance is determined by a variety of factors such as CPU temperature, type of workload, number of active cores, power consumption, current draw, and so on. When the processor has additional headroom, Precision Boost Overdrive will automatically raise frequencies. Upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Scroll down to the Precision Boost Overdrive submenu and enable Precision Boost Overdrive. We re-ran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. During the boost, we can regularly see the single-threaded frequency boost to 5 GHz and the multi-threaded frequency boost to 4.5 GHz. We can see that the multi-threaded benchmark applications in particular benefit nicely from enabling PBO. This is of course because our custom loop water cooling provides the best thermal conditions for this 16-core CPU. Now let's start manually overclocking. In addition to overclocking the CPU frequency to 4325 MHz, we also increased the fabric clock to 1.8 GHz, we set the memory frequency to DDR4 3600 and manually configure the memory timings. This is our maximum Prime95 with AVX stable setting. Upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to Manual. Set Memory Frequency to DDR4-3600. Set F-Clock Frequency to 1800 MHz. Set CPU Core Ratio to 43.25x. Set CPU Core Voltage to Manual. Set CPU Core Voltage Override to 1.2V. Enter the DRAM Timing Control submenu. Set DRAM timings to 16, 16, 16, 16, 36. Leave the DRAM timing control submenu. Set DRAM voltage to 1.4 volt, then save and exit the BIOS. We rerun the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to default operation. We can notice a couple of things. First, just like with the previous generation of Ryzen CPUs, we lose performance against default settings in single threaded light workloads. The reason is that by default, the frequency would boost to almost 5 GHz, whereas with a manual overclock, we are limited to 4325 MHz. Second, we can see a positive impact of the additional performance from overclocking the fabric and memory. This helps overcome some of the performance deficit we see from the lower than default boost CPU frequency. Third, in multi-thread applications, we see the performance increase of the additional CPU frequency amplified with the raised fabric and memory clock. Running Prime95 small FFT with AVX at 4325 MHz, we're seeing peak CPU temperature of 80C and a peak CPU package power of 180 watts. Now let's look at post Prime95 overclocking capabilities. If we ignore Prime95 with AVX, we can further increase the CPU frequency to 4.65 GHz while maintaining the same fabric and memory overclock. Upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to Manual. Set Memory Frequency to DDR4-3600. Set F-Clock Frequency to 1800 MHz. Set CPU Core Ratio to 46.50x. Enter the DRAM Timing Control submenu. Set DRAM timings to 16, 16, 16, 16, 36. Leave the DRAM timing control submenu. Set CPU core voltage to manual. Set CPU core voltage override to 1.3 volts. Set DRAM voltage to 1.4 volt. Then save and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. As expected, the performance continues to rise. Interesting to note is that at 4.65 GHz, Single-threaded workloads like SuperPi and Geekbench 5 are still lower than default. Since we're still quite below the peak frequencies of 5 GHz, we saw default settings. Now lastly, let's do some DOS overclocking. DOS OC is short for Dynamic OC Switching, and in my opinion, it's a very smart way to work around AMD's biggest challenge when it comes to overclocking. In order to frame this perfectly, let's grab back to a previous video when we were overclocking the Matisse XT processor. When going through the numbers and discussing them with some of my industry friends, I realized that rather than having several overclocking strategies, AMD users have a set of overclocking trade-offs, but not in a bad way. Frankly, the out-of-box frequencies and resulting performance are excellent. 
The AMD engineers who were tasked with getting users the best possible performance at default settings did an amazing job. In fact, they did such a good job that manual overclocking can give you worse performance in certain scenarios, specifically single-threaded light workloads. When manually overclocking, you lose the benefits of automatic boost frequency. Also, you can't configure the boost frequencies by specific use case, for example, by core usage or per core. This is the first overclocking trade-off. Settle for lower single-threaded performance with higher all-core performance or the other way around. Another overclocking trade-off is that there's no way to configure the system for truly worst case scenarios, such as Prime95 small FFT with AVX. On other platforms, you can use an AVX offset ratio to temporarily reduce the performance if such workloads come your way. But on AMD, you can't. That means you have to decide whether you're willing to trade in a potentially less stable system for additional performance in certain situations. Dynamic OC switching allows us to, well, dynamically switch between OC mode and PBO. The real world implication is that you can now benefit from those very aggressive frequencies offered by PBO that go well over your manual overclock. DOS OC requires very little additional configuration work. We'll show you the configuration for both our Maximum Prime 95 stable and our maximum all-core manual overclock. Upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Clock Tuner to Manual. Set Memory Frequency to DDR4-3600. Set F Clock Frequency to 1800 MHz. Enter the CPU Core Ratio per CCX submenu. Set Core VID to 1.2. Set CCD0 CCX0 Ratio to 43.25. Set CCD1 CCX0 ratio to 43.25. Enable dynamic OC switcher. Set current threshold to switch to OC mode to 75 amps. Leave the CPU core ratio per CCX submenu. Enter the precision boost overdrive submenu. Enable precision boost overdrive. Leave the precision boost overdrive submenu. Enter the DRAM timing control submenu. Set DRAM timings to 16, 16, 16, 16, 36. Leave the DRAM timing control submenu. Set DRAM voltage to 1.4 volt. Then save and exit the BIOS. For manual OC, upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI overclock tuner to manual. Set memory frequency to DDR4-3600. Set F clock frequency to 1800 MHz. Enter the CPU core ratio per CCX submenu. Set core VID to 1.3. Set CCD0 CCX0 ratio to 46.50. Set CCD1 CCX0 ratio to 46.50. Enable dynamic OC switcher. Set current threshold to switch to OC mode to 75 amps. Leave the CPU core ratio per CCX submenu. Enter the precision boost overdrive submenu. Enable Precision Boost Overdrive. Leave the Precision Boost Overdrive submenu. Enter the DRAM Timing Control submenu. Set DRAM timings to 16, 16, 16, 16, 36. Leave the DRAM Timing Control submenu. Set DRAM voltage to 1.4. Then save and exit the BIOS. Before we get to the performance comparison, I want to have a quick word on the current threshold value. The key thing to keep in mind is that DOS OC will switch between OC mode and precision boost overdrive, so you can benefit from the aggressive single thread frequency and performance offered by PBO. The current threshold is one of the ways to determine the exact point at which the modes are switched. Anything above the current threshold will force OC mode. Anything below the current threshold will force PBO mode. The exact trigger point will depend on your CPU, your motherboard, your cooling, and your system. One way of identifying the right trigger point is to check the CPU current during a benchmark workload. I'll give you an example. First, make sure that the system is set to default settings with precision boost overdrive enabled. Then, go into the operating system. And here you can use hardware info and Prime95 without AVX. Gradually increase the amount of Prime95 threads until you see the operating frequency drop below your desired manual overclock. When this happens, check the CPU current in hardware info. This is the value you can use to configure DOS OC.
We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation at both our maximum Prime 95 stable and our maximum all core manual overclocks. All right, let's wrap this up. To be honest, I was quite impressed by the performance increase and the overclocking capabilities of the Ryzen 9 5950X. I think those two combined make this quite a compelling product for, uh, for enthusiasts. In terms of the overclocking specifically, there's not really that much new compared to previous generations. Uh, the main overclocking uh, challenges still exist from previous generation. That is, if you tune for an absolute worst case scenario like Prime 95 with AVX, then you're going to be losing a lot of single threaded performance. The thing is that on this Crosshair 8 Dark Hero, DOS OC kind of helps alleviate that problem. And I think that's where the biggest thumbs up for me goes to this platform. It's to the ASUS engineers that came up with DOS OC. If you configure DOS OC correctly, then you'll be able to both enjoy the really aggressive single threaded light workload frequencies offered by AMD's PBO, as well as benefit from the effort that you go through for tuning your manual OC. All right, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comment section below. If you like the video, you know what to do and till the next time.